Okay, the other disorder I would like to talk about is asthma. And asthma, this condition will be covered again for you on PEATS because, you know, it's more common in, in PEATS. By the time patients, they get to adults, usually the asthma is either controlled because of medication or they identify the all the triggers so they stay away from them. However, what you will see, and that will also be covered in critical care, is asthma attack once become a medical emergency. But let's talk about asthma here. So asthma, mainly, 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 again, I want you to know that this affects the airway. It's a chronic inflammatory disorder that affects the airway. So it's not affecting you know, necessarily the alveoli, so it has to do with the airway uh, flow. Now let's see what's what's the uh, you know the etiology is mainly this is a mainly it's an immune reaction to a, uh, something, and uh, again there's no way to list all these etiologies because they depend uh, what I'm allergic to you're not necessarily allergic to but here are some of the common of them. Number one is the viral or bacterial infection, also or some disease like GERD also can cause that can trigger it. Um, the environment definitely you know the smoking the, the uh, um, all kind of different irritating. Um, flowers, uh, the the uh, sprays, the, the perfumes, um, all this can uh, trigger the immune reaction. And there are some medication, uh, beta blockers, of course, and aspirin. We found that aspirin also can induce um, asthma. So regardless of the case, let's talk about the um, bath of uh, Yeah, and also exercise and emotional distress and, and uh, can also cause that. Now let's, let's see the pathophysiology here. Asthma is a chronic disorder involving the airways of the lungs. Normally, oxygen-rich air is inhaled and carbon dioxide-rich air is exhaled in a smooth, unobstructed cycle. In asthma, the airways swell and constrict, obstructing air movement and resulting in prolonged exhalation. The obstructed flow causes the characteristic wheeze of asthma. A close-up view of the airways shows the inflammatory changes that narrow them. An external view of the airways shows how bronchospasm tightens the airway diameter as well. Treatment of acute exacerbations includes inhaled bronchodilators, which act to relieve the bronchospasm, allowing for improved diameter of the airway. Steroids are given orally or intravenously to decrease the internal inflammatory changes within the bronchial. Okay, so what I want you to take from pathophysiology, again, the problem here is the airway. The airway diameter is a smaller, uh, number one, because of the cons bronchial constrictions. We have the smooth muscles now reacting by constricting. So that's one thing, and that will help us in management. The second thing, there's uh, inflammation. It's uh, the, immune, the immune reaction leads the mast cells to produce a lot of um, uh, um, mucus. So... So these two things, uh, we want to keep that in mind as a mechanism because that will, uh, will illustrate the management. Okay, so based on uh, this pathophysiology, now we can understand the clinical manifestations. The most classical symptoms of asthma because of the uh, diameter becomes slower is wheezes. Now, remember this constricted, so wheezes, a patient a child, uh, a chest tightness also, dyspnea and maybe breathlessness and cough. Now the cough again because of the acum because of the mucus that being released from the mast cells as a result of immune reaction wheezes because of the narrowing airway uh, and chest tightness because the patient is trying hard to get to to um, have the air it goes enough air goes inside again if you think of the relationship now when the diameter is smaller that means that you need more air or it will take longer for the air to get in, to get in and out and that's why another symptom is that the ratio between inspiration and expiration will change 
There is one important thing. Um, wheezes is bad, but breathlessness or when you don't hear any breathing sound, that's even worse, of course, especially if you have a patient, you know that this, the asthma can progress, actually. So you may have a patient who is um, wheezing in inspiration only, sorry, expiration only. Now it's worse if it become inspiration and expiration, and it's worse if you don't hear anything. It means that the diameter is even getting closer, slower and smaller and smaller and smaller. So I want to pay attention to that. So, in physical examination, definitely, I, I, it's highly expected to hear wheezes. And let's see, let's hear that. Now, the inspiration expiration ratio, this is usually, it's one to two. Uh, we take double time to exhale. But... Um, uh, now it's staying longer. It's it, it's it, patients we need even longer time to get rid of the air out, you know, during exhalation because of the narrow airways. Also, cough again, and we talk anxiety. Patient will become very anxious, and as a result of that, vital signs will change. Patient um, uh, is scared because of the uh, the whole condition, and also um, he he tried to assume a tripod position just to get more and more air uh, during inspiration. The vital signs will change again. Depends on the whole status. Uh, tachy tachycardia, high blood pressure has to do with anxiety. Uh, let's see this uh, patient. This is how he will um, a patient with asthma attack would look like. He say he can't breathe. Okay. So uh, now the diagnostic test, the major diagnostic again based on the clinical manifestations or the clinical uh, presentation as you see, um, depends on the severity of the asthma. Sometimes nothing can help, even the X-ray doesn't doesn't show much. Sometimes it may, but there's one test I want I want to talk about, which is the um, spirometry. And basically, this is a device where we ask the patient to exhale, and we will measure the force of air that's being exhaled and that will give us an idea of how narrow the airway is so it's a percentage so that's one of the things that we use but again in, in in case like this patient um we don't usually do any diagnostic tests because it's just clear by the clinical presentation the management again uh, the biggest things that this patient may have to do again this is not a curable disease but it's a treatable which means that the patient can control if we so we a lot most i mean uh, every almost everybody with asthma at one point of their life, they have to to take, keep taking their medication to control the asthma response and also to stay away from whatever triggers their asthma. So usually this patient, they have that MDI, which is a meter dose inhaler, uh, and um, they uh, whenever they start to have an asthma, they, they need to take two to four puffs of, puffs of this uh, albuterol uh, every 20 minutes for three, you know, three times, so over an hour three times. And if they don't feel better, they have to go to ER. And there's some uh, uh, that that's whenever they feel. Also, the, the we can, sometimes we prescribe short course of oral corticosteroids again, if if it's triggering, um, if it's you know the season triggering the the asthma. But uh, there are a lot of medication that also we prescribe. It's it's a long term. The patient needs to take it. Um, just before they go to any um, environment or any activity that can trigger asthma. Now, if nothing helps, then the patient has to come to the emergency room and there where we take care of them, that we need to provide oxygen and we, it depends on the patient condition, we will have to react. Now, uh, if it's an active um, attack of asthma, acute, as you know, there's inflammatory response and there's a broker constriction. These are the two major things. So the inflammation, in this case, in emergency, the best thing is to do is to give corticosteroids, IV or orally. If the patient can swallow, research source that both are as effective, IV or orally. And also we need to give a um, nebulizer. Again, depends on the severity of the patient. If this doesn't help, which we will talk about that in critical care, what we call asthmatic as status asthmaticus where you give all this kind of medication but still the patient is not doing better and that's why we have to intubate the patient and put them in mechanical ventilation but meanwhile meanwhile basically we have two options we have the anti-inflammatory and we have the um bronchodilators okay so let's see how they work during normal respiration air travels through the nose down the trachea and into smaller and smaller airways called bronchi. In some cases, the smooth muscle that wraps around the bronchi may constrict, 
mucus levels can increase. This makes breathing difficult. Generally, this condition is treated with medication called bronchodilators. The most common types of bronchodilators are anticholinergic and beta-2 agonists. These drugs are inhaled, travel down the airway, and bind to bronchial smooth muscle cells. This results in muscle relaxation and decreased levels of mucus, which allows for easier breathing. Okay. Now, a few things that I know that this will cover in farm, but but there's the things that we um, I need to remind you of. Um, the uh, for example, we talked about the corticosteroid use. You know, also, also always uh, remind your patients to uh, wash their mouth every time they use, so they don't uh, get the fungal infection. But um, I want to keep in, keep in mind that albuterol is the classical and the best the best kind of beta agonist that um, we give. Um, it's a short acting. Uh, beta agonist and this is the kind of medication that we you know, want to give in case of um, moderate asthma attack or even an emergency uh, a, a, while if you use something like the atrovin which is an, a, a different type it's anticholinergic that's not what we want to do if there's an acute attack it takes longer for it to work it takes 20 30 minutes sometimes or even longer while the albuterol can work faster but albuterol it's a beta agonist so it can increase the sympathetic nervous system so you will see tremor and see maybe you may see tachycardia as side effect so i'll be careful if my patient has tachycardia already to give them albuterol and always remember that uh, the anticholinergic, one of the major side effects is a dry mouth and palpitation also. And you want to be careful in giving for patients with prostate uh, problems or glaucoma because it's increased the pressure in the eye. The other thing is you are expected to know is to know how to teach your patient about using the MDI. And um, it's pretty simple. Basically, I, I, you know, the books goes in details about it. I want you to, to, to know that. Tell them to shake exhale inhale hold and exhale that's this are the steps we'll talk about it in the class more now here are uh, let me show you how to teach your patient about how to use the mdi and there's the other type that has the capsule that we call the dry powder so let's say first see the mdi <laughs> 